Good day, watch enthusiast, and what a day it is because I get to show you my AliExpress homage haul from the 1111 sale this year. I don't do this every year, so it's an added treat this time around. Okay, so getting right into this, I want to preface by saying this is just a hobby, and anyone who feels the need to tell me these are garbage watches in the comments, please leave your Chinese watch hate at the door. Some of us are delighted that these offerings exist, and is no doubt why most of my visitors clicked on this video. Now that the anti-troll speech is behind us, we can now take a detailed look at some of these awesome alternatives to the big boys. This time around, I won't get into the intricate details of every difference between the watches, but instead showcase the alternatives, strong points, and overall visual appeal. Our first homage hails from the 18 karat white gold Vacheron Constantine, American 1921. This watch was spoken highly of by collector Kevin O'Leary, based on its dial and likened it to Alice in Wonderland. At a price of around 30k, it definitely moves past the entry-level luxury status. A notable difference is the case size with the original at 36.5mm and the homage seen here at 38mm. Of course, the movements will be night and day between the two watches, and most of our Chinese representations will sport the PT5000s, Seagull, or Seiko movements with the occasional options for Swiss Solita SW200s, while the original watch will adorn an in-house or a Swiss movement. This particular watch has the Seagull ST1701. What is interesting is that these Chinese brands are really raising the bar for value in their watches, adding things like sapphire crystals and AR coatings with some good polishing, decent loom on some of them, but unfortunately not this one. This Baltany 1921, however, really is a powerhouse in this category, offering this watch for around 160 US dollars. On wrist, it feels great, and I think I can live with the price difference to own such a unique timepiece. It's been said that while driving a vehicle, this oddly positioned dial set gives the wearer a comfortable viewing experience, that is if your hands are at 10 and 2 where they should be. I know I appreciate the likeness to the top dog, and this one gives me a red rocket when I think about how much I save to look dapper when I go out for an overly priced meal. Number two in, we have an homage to the Zen 556A, a simplistic little German watch with a simple date complication at 430, SW200 movement, satinized stainless steel case that measures in at 38.5 millimeters with an 11 millimeter thickness, AR coating of course with 20 bars of water resistance, and loom. So what besides the name, which not very many commoners will know, constitutes paying around $1400? Bernie's answer is the All Titanium T2576MS minus the date complication, but adding a lot more candy to the wrist, including a Japanese VH31 sweeping quartz, 37mm case size by 9mm of thickness, AR coating, sapphire crystal, and only weighing 75 grams with a loom that puts some Swiss watches to shame, all for the affordable price of around $55. Speaking of that loom, I was blown away at the value per add-on here, and this one stands out in a dark room sitting in your watch case after the lights dim. It's a win for Bernie, and I frankly don't know how they're making money, but I am not, I repeat, not asking for a price hike. I think this is a complete no-brainer for savings, and I even own a Zen, so I'm familiar with their watches, but I'm still suggesting this as an alternative. It's a little small for my six and three-quarter inch wrist, but it still speaks volumes, and I switched out the bracelet, which is maybe my only gripe due to its arm hair extraction. I opted for this more flexible band, and I am even more enamored with it now. I really recommend this for an everyday, and why not splurge on a new strap, because I know you'll have the extra cash. Ah, the classic sub, and I'm not talking about your local subway. I'm referring to the iconic Rolex Submariner, a true grail for the entry-level luxury watch collector with a comfortable 41 millimeter case size, 300 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, cyclops date window, and all the standard bells and whistles for Rolex, there's no doubt that wearing the name is why collectors will drop 10K to own this legend. But what if there's an alternative that may emerge rather than submerge? Enter the Kronos Subdiver, coming out punching holes in the fabric of homage watchmaking, featuring a PT5000 movement, 200 meters of water resistance, a full BGW9 loomed bezel, 
glide clasp bracelet, 40 millimeter case size with a 13.5 millimeter thickness, AR coating, sapphire front, and all for around 230 US dollars. A fraction of the Rolex price, and maybe not as quality, but arguably more options for way less cash. I'm starting to see a trend in my collection already. These China-made watches are killing it in the loom category, and as we progress, you'll see what I mean. If I want to showcase my watches for the outsider, I refer to my homage case because it's like diving into complete darkness and seeing that first hint of bioluminescence. Just brilliant. Imagine this, you go to your local jewelry store and the owner is sporting the sub on his wrist. You come strolling in with your china fodder, proudly displayed on your wrist, and the owner notices you have a very similar watch. You don't show him up close and only comment on the small world we live in. As the conversation progresses, you spot a watch you've been looking for in his shop and strike up your bartering script. Now, you've already gained rapport because he thinks you have good taste, and you'll be a repeat customer, so you throw down your best game and get the watch you wanted for 30% less than what he was asking, and that, my friends, is how good this watch looks from a distance. Omega is iconic, and with movie presence, this watch just drives the lunacy for wanting this model. Of course, this is the 42mm No Time to Die with the in-house 8806, 300 meters of water resistance, yada yada yada, all the good stuff, right? I mean, pish posh, it's only seven grand. Where can I get three? China, you say? Well, let's boat our way over and take a look at their offerings. Well, shoot, the boat was full of deportees, so instead I went over to AliExpress in my browser and look what I found. The name's Haim, Haim Dalla. You know, the distant cousin twice removed to 007. If Omega isn't reason enough to want to own this watch, its affiliation with the film will be, but what if you didn't star as an extra in the film and hence don't have the seven grand you would need to purchase this? Well, instead, try under 200 bucks and you'll find a watch containing an NH35 Seiko movement, titanium case, 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, AR coating, C3 loom, and two straps to experiment with, and a 42 millimeter dial that matches the original diameter, and 13.5 millimeter thickness, it's a hit with me. I don't have to say much about this loom shot because it speaks for itself. I like to see yellow instead of typical green or blue every now and then, so I'm glad they decided to spice things up a bit. Minus the bezel loom on the original, we still have great visibility with this option and actually get plenty of time to die also. I took it upon myself to cut down and customize the strap gibbon with this one because, frankly, the way it came originally added to the girth around my wrist, almost making it a deal breaker. If you have over a 7.5 inch wrist, you may be okay with the stock strap, but otherwise it's a beast. Overall, I love the feel of this watch and I'm happy to lay down the scraps to own such an iconic look, especially when I paid double O nothing compared to the original. Before we look at the coolest homage today, we have an original IWC Big Pilot 43 Marcus Bueller tribute with a flying tourbillon limited to 51 pieces, or actually 50 since they reserved one for Marcus, so it's basically unattainable. This 43mm sapphire sandwich has a special movement done in all black and extras out the wazoo. This watch costs so much that IWC won't even tell you the price if you go to their website, unless you're deemed worthy. The initial announcement at the drop, however, was approximately $142,077, which makes this the most expensive homage to the original that I own. So for the consumer's slap in the face to IWC's pompous nature, we gaze upon the Herodland F016 Pilot Watch. I opted for the blue dial, but caught at the right angle actually appears black. It contains a ST3620 movement, sapphire as well, and has a 42mm case size with a 12.4mm thickness. This adaptation will only run you about 180 US dollars, so I say hop on that boat with the dearly deported, or just pay the stinking internet fee to navigate your way to Alley for this excellent alternative to the unattainable. Excellent BGW9 loom as well? What have I done to deserve such a treat? As you can see, there is no reason not to buy one of these if homage watches tickle your turbine. I mean, this is just too cool not to own. I don't think you'll be sorry for pulling the trigger on this one, and it has great gift written all over it also. On the wrist it has presence, probably due to that oversized crown that brings the diameter to 52mm, but who's complaining other than the micro wrist demographic, right? 
I can say that the majority of men could pull this off and maybe even some of the ladies. This looks great in person and there's a reason it was limited. What a fabulous, affordable answer to what is, in my opinion, the best homage we have here today. So there's more than a few possible candidates for homage territory here, but what I have found is a cross between the Serica 5303 and the Rado Captain Cook. Both bear a resemblance, but neither are exactly on the nose by any means. The Serica sports a 39mm by 12.2mm thickness on the case, and what is a notable likeness with its double graduation bezel and woven steel with integrated end pieces and articulated links. I guess mentioning the Rado Captain Cook is a bit of a long shot, but because I own the exact watch this one reminded me of, I thought I would mention it. The Ixendao 5303 has a 40mm case size by a 13mm thickness, a sapphire crystal with 200 meters of water resistance. I of course opted for the PT5000 movement because they are cheap and easily replaceable if anything goes wrong. I actually purchased this to replace my Rado, and as you can see I ordered the same burgundy band to scratch that itch. Snagged mine for about $215, but that is still a bit pricey. Luminous C3 Green is what they claim, and it is actually quite nice. I appreciate that dot on the bezel, rather than nothing as well. Looks like we have another winner during the darker hours. Not a huge fan of it on the wrist, unfortunately, and I may have to revert to the steel band to more closely resemble its homage. Although the new band isn't a deal breaker, it definitely doesn't hold a candle to the Rado, and I find it hard justifying its replacement. I guess when it comes down to it, I am the only one that is truly bothered by this fact, and I will probably still get the compliments I seek as I flash this one on the town. The Black Bay 58. The legendary Tudor has made its return to my collection in the form of an homage to this 39mm case size, sapphire sport, and 200 meters of water resistant beauty. This is my second Black Bay homage I own, and I'm happy to represent this fine timepiece with an imposter I respect. This green gradient really works well with this style, and the bronze case really hits it home. The strap that comes with it is a slightly lighter shade than what is pictured on Alley. This, of course, has the PT5000 movement, beating it 4 Hz, sapphire crystal, and AR coating. It comes standard with a 60-click unidirectional ceramic bezel, screw-down crown, and 200 meters of water resistance. This one comes in a bit pricey at $250, US, but it is well worth it. With the C9 Super Luminova, the light shines a brighter green, and it's far from disappointing. I'm really impressed with my haul this year because all but one are glowing like a firefly in a desolate swamp. For your complimentary wrist roll, this watch really fits well to the 6 and 3 quarter inch wearer. I love to own a piece that in essence Tudor has not made available. That is the caveat of homage watches because they can do things slightly off the beaten path and provide options not made available by big brands. Did I mention they're affordable? Anyone who has an appreciation for arm candy have a chance at making a well-rounded collection for themselves, and to this I say good for them. The GMT Spring Drive. Grand Seiko is truly the masters at their craft, and also the most affordable at luxury grade pieces. Like this one sitting in the range of five to $8,000, the original coming in at a 41mm case size and a 13.9mm thickness. I wanted this GMT and since I already own a Grand Seiko, I thought rather than further my debt, I would get into the world of San Martin. Now is this watch all I wanted for an homage? The answer is a definite no, but it does provide that space filler in my collection that I still go to on a whim when I crave a taste for that world. I'm kicking myself just a bit for not opting for the white San Dunesque dial they offered, but I'll live. This version is completely sufficient at 39mm case size, a comfortable 13mm thickness, and an NH34 caliber, AR coating sapphire, and a finishing that rivals Grand Seiko in bang for buck. Speaking of, you can nab one of these for just under $300 or less during the end of the year sales. So the question is, does it have loom? And the answer is a resounding yes. BGW9 is typical yet welcomed on this one. It's not as impressive as prior selections, but I am completely satisfied as its happy new owner. As the wrist goes on about its day, this watch draws attention, as you can see, with some good light refraction, detailed symmetry, and fancy-looking resemblance. 
I say this because it's not a perfect homage, but sometimes I like that variance from looking exactly like the original. The bottom line is that this watch can do what a lot can't. Given its price tag, I say jump on board the S&M train and live a little. The Glasuta CQ is a classy yet sporty dive watch that is really a stunner. It matches with most attire and I think this is why it's so appealing to me. I adore its dimensions at 39.5mm case size and 12mm of thickness. This German made beauty is unfortunately not attainable to the casual collector at a whopping 24k. So I'm very happy to have access to the look minus the hook. I am proud to announce and showcase the model S435 Seastern Diving Alternative sitting in a much more comfortable realm of around $200. And what do you get for your wooden nickel? Let's start with the ST2130 automatic movement, domed sapphire, a 39mm case size with a very nice 12mm thickness, 200 meters of water resistance, and an exhibition case back to name a few. This is one of my favorite pickups this year for obvious reasons. I am loving the choice of loom here with the BG, and really is the perfect placement for optimal viewing when it's dark, in or out. I really think Seastern has raised the bar with this selection, and I am eager to see what they come up with for their next tribute watch. I have to say that the dimensions on this watch are perfect for my size wrist, and it is extremely comfortable to wear with this rubber strap. I love the clean sweep and slightly decorated movement that the Seagull provides, and the color shift between the black and gold really pops. This is elegant, classy, and slightly sporty, and it's what I recommend to everyone who wants to dabble in the world of homage watches. This next and final watch we will examine is one I attained to own the original of within the next year. It is none other than the Tudor Pelagos FXD. The highlights here on the original is the titanium case, bi-directional ceramic ring bezel, extremely legible snowflake handset, a 70 hour power reserve, 42 millimeter case back and a 12.75 millimeter thickness. It sports 200 meters of water resistance that has that marine national presence. A must own among watch nerds such as myself. Just a bit out of range for me currently at around 4,000 US dollars. Until I get the opportunity to get the original, this Tactical Frog FXD will have to do, but it's not an entire disappointment. From a slight distance, it looks amazingly similar to the Tudor, so it gives me the look I want, most certainly. If we were to dissect it like a frog, we would simply find the NH35, and surprisingly enough, we get the titanium here as well on the case. It has the same dimensional case size at 42 millimeters, but it's a bit thicker at 13.44 millimeters. Also, amazingly, we get a sapphire front with AR coating as well, and all of this for around 160 US dollars. So you may wonder, what's the catch? And quite literally, it is the bezel action. I might as well slap some oil in the cracks because it feels like a patient with tooth grinding syndrome to turn it. Overall, however, I am quite pleased. I must say the loom on this doesn't let me down because it looks brilliant with that BGW9 all over it. I decree that features for the dollar give this homage a top three tier spot for the year. Why can't they all be this good? Again, I love how similar they have captured the look of the original Tudor, and it looks the part on person. If I have any negatives, it would just be the strap isn't the best quality material, and the screw down crown and bezel action need to be doused with gasoline and set ablaze. Everything else is more than worth the asking price and has my approval for a well-rounded homage collection. Thank you all for checking out my end of the year AliExpress pickups, and if you feel you enjoyed this video, just let me know by a sub or a like. Thanks again, and thank you for giving me your hard-earned attention.